ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு விவித் கெமி யூடியூப் சேனல் திஸ் இஸ் வித்யாஸ்ரீ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஐ வில் பி சால்விங் கர்நாடகா டிடி எக்ஸாமினேஷன் மேத்தமெட்டிக்ஸ் அண்ட் சயின்ஸ் கொஷின் பேப்பர் ஆஃப் தி இயர் டூ தி மேத்தமெட்டிக்ஸ் பார்ட் கொஷின்ஸ் ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் கொஷின் நம்பர் நைன்டி ஸோ தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொஷின் ஃபார் திஸ் வீடியோ இஸ் கொஷின் நம்பர் நைன்டி கிவன் ஃபோர் டேன் ஏ இஸ் ஈக்வல் டு த்ரீ தென் தி வேல்யூ ஆஃப் ஃபோர் சைன் ஏ மைனஸ் காஸ் ஏ டிவைடட் பை ஃபோர் சைன் ஏ ப்ளஸ் காஸ் ஏ ஈஸ் ஆப்ஷன் ஒன் ஒன் பை டூ ஆப்ஷன் டூ ஒன் பை ரூட் டூ ஆப்ஷன் த்ரீ ஜீரோ ஆப்ஷன் ஃபோர் ஒன் பை ரூட் த்ரீ இந்த கொஷன் இட்ஸ் கிவன் ஃபோர் டேன் ஏ இஸ் ஈக்வல் டு த்ரீ ஸோ ஃப்ரம் திஸ் ஐ கேன் ரைட் டேன் ஏ இஸ் த்ரீ டிவைட் பை ஃபோர் So in trigonometry, we define sin, cos or tan of an angle for a right angle triangle. So let me consider a right angle triangle. So I'll denote this triangle as ABC. So here B is 90 degree. So in the question they have given tan A. So we have sin A. is nothing but opposite divided by hypotenuse so here for this triangle ac is hypotenuse ab is the adjacent side for the angle a and bc is the opposite side for angle a so sin a is defined as opposite divided by hypotenuse so it is bc divided by ac cos a is adjacent divided by hypotenuse side so adjacent side is ab hypotenuse is ac and a tan a that is given so it is opposite side divided by adjacent side so the opposite side is bc adjacent side is ab and the value is given it is 3 by 4 therefore we have the side bc which is 3 and the adjacent side ab which is 4 we need to find what is the hypotenuse or what is the value for ac so this hypotenuse value you can find by using pythagorean th theorem so ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square by using this equation you can find ac as square root of ab square plus bc square so this is one way by which you can find the hypotenuse and an easy method is to remember few pythagorean triplets so we have a triplet 3 4 5 so 3 4 5 is a pythagorean triplet always the higher number is of hypotenuse then remaining two numbers can be either opposite side or adjacent side so here we already have 3 as opposite side and 4 is the value for adjacent side so we are about to find the value of hypotenuse and that comes out to be 5 so when you evaluate it using pythagorean theorem also you will get the value as 5 so we have found out the opposite side adjacent side as well as hypotenuse in the question it is asked us to find the ratio including sin of angle and cos of the angle so we'll find is what is sin a and cos a So sin A is BC divided by AC. BC is 3 and AC is 5. So cos A is AB divided by AC. AB is 4. AC is 5. So this is the value of sin A and cos A. Now we will substitute into the expression what we need to evaluate. We need to evaluate this. We have 4 into sin A which is 3 by 5. minus cos a which is 4 by 5 divided by 4 into sin a 3 by 5 plus cos a which is 4 by 5 so in the numerator we have 12 by 5 minus 4 by 5 and denominator we have 12 by 5 plus 4 by 5 simplifying the numerator we get 8 by 5 and denominator we have 16 divided by 5 for the simplifying this we get 1 by 2 so therefore the right answer for this question is option 1 1 by 
question number 92 sin a is equal to 1 by 2 and cos b is equal to 1 by 2 then the value of a plus b is option 1 30 degree option 2 90 degree option 3 45 degree option 4 60 degree in the question it's given sin a is half cos b is half we need to find a and b in the beginning so a is nothing but sin inverse of half and b is cos inverse of half so we know that sin 30 degree is half so therefore sin inverse of half is 30 degree which means and a is 30 degree and cos 60 degree is 1 by 2 which means cos inverse of 1 by 2 is 60 degree so therefore the values of a is 30 degree and b is 60 degree in the question it is asked us to find a plus b so it is 30 degree plus 60 degree which comes out to be 90 degree so therefore the right answer is option 2 90 degree question number 93 the points minus 5 comma 1 1 comma p and 4 comma minus 2 are collinear if the value of p is option 1 0 option 2 minus 1 option 3 1 option 4 2 i will consider these points as x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 so if given three points there are three methods by which we can tell that those points are collinear so the first method is using distance formula so if i consider the given points as a b and c then using distance formula if we need to tell that these points are collinear the distance between the points a and b when you add it to the distance between b and c this should be equal to the distance between a and c only in this case we tell that a b c are collinear and the second method by which we can tell the points are collinear is by using slope method here the slopes of any two pair of points AB, BC and AC will be equal. So if any two slopes either AB, BC or AC are equal then we tell the points are collinear where you will find a slope like this you will find the difference of y points y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 and the third method is by using area of triangle formula so triangle is formed by joining three points which are not collinear okay so if we have three points like this we can form a triangle using these three points Whereas if the points are collinear, so if these three points are lying on the same line, means it is collinear, we cannot form a triangle out of it. So here area of triangle will be 0. So using the formula of area of triangle formed using three points, we find out or we prove that the given points are collinear. So in order to solve this question number 93, I will use the third method area of triangle so let me explain how we can solve this so area of triangle formed by three points is given by the formula half x1 into y2 minus y3 plus x2 into y3 minus y1 plus x3 into y1 minus y2 so we will substitute the values of x, y and x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3 into the formula of triangle. I told you that the area of triangle 
formed using a collinear points is zero it is because you cannot form a triangle using a collinear points so the area of triangle is zero then we have half x1 is minus 5 so it is minus 5 y2 is p y3 is minus 2 plus x2 is 1 y3 is minus 2 y1 is 1 plus x3 is 4 y1 is 1 minus y2 is p simplifying this minus 5p minus 10 minus 3 plus 4 minus 4p so if i shift this half towards left hand side that becomes a zero so simplifying the terms inside bracket minus 5p minus 4p is minus 9p minus 10 minus 3 is 13 plus 4 is minus 9 so i can write 9p is equal to minus 9 simplifying this you get p as minus 1 so therefore the right answer for this question is that value of p is minus 1 then the given points become collinear question number 94 m and n are the roots of the quadratic equation 4x square plus 3x plus 7 is equal to 0 then the value of 1 by m plus 1 by n option 1 minus 2 by 7 option 2 minus 1 by 7 option 3 minus 4 by 7 option 4 minus 3 by 7 the given quadratic equation is 4x square plus 3x plus 7 is equal to 0. So comparing it with the general equation, I can write a is 4 and b is 3, c is 7. So we have sum of roots. So roots given here are m and n. So sum of the roots is m plus n. It is given by minus b by a and the products of root m into n is given by c by a so where minus b by a or the sum of roots is minus b is 3 by 4 m into n is given by c by a it is c value is 7 7 divided by 4 they have asked us to find the value of 1 by m plus 1 by m so taking lcm i can write the denominator as m n and numerator becomes n plus m the same can be written as m plus n divided by m into n just now we have found the value of m plus n and m into n m plus n is minus 3 by 4 m into n is 7 by 4 simplifying this we get minus 3 divided by 7 so therefore the value of 1 by m plus 1 by n is minus 3 by 7 and the right answer here is option 4 I have done a video on important points related to quadratic equation. If you have not watched that video, you can watch the video by clicking on the i button appearing on the screen. Question number 95. The quadratic equation whose roots are 3 plus root 2 and 3 minus root 2 is. Option 1. x square minus 6x plus 7 is equal to 0. Option 2. x square minus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0. Option 3 x square plus 6x plus 7 is equal to 0. Option 4, x square minus 6x minus 7 is equal to 0. So given the roots of the equation, so let me consider the roots as alpha and beta. So let alpha and beta be the roots of the given quadratic equation. So let me consider alpha as 3 plus root 2 and beta as 3 minus root 2. So when roots of the quadratic equation are given, we can frame the quadratic equation and that quadratic equation is given by x square minus sum of roots into x plus product of roots. So this is the quadratic equation when roots are given. So if you want to know how do we get this equation. So we know sum of roots is given by so let me consider the roots as alpha plus beta itself sum of roots 
is given by minus b by a and we have products of root given by c by a and we have the general expression for quadratic equation it is ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 dividing this throughout by a this becomes x square plus b by a into x plus c by a so from these two equations you can write b by a is nothing but minus alpha plus beta so i'll substitute the value of b by a as minus of alpha plus beta into x and c by a is alpha into beta so this is how we get the quadratic equation when its roots are given so here we need to substitute the sum of roots as well as product of root so we will just find it alpha plus beta alpha is 3 plus root 2 plus beta is 3 minus root 2 so plus root 2 and minus root 2 get cancels with one another so it's 3 plus 3 6 we need to find products of root alpha into beta so this is 3 plus root 2 into beta is 3 minus root 2 so now this is of the form a plus b into a minus b which is simplified as a square minus b square i'll simplify this a square is 3 square so b is root 2 so b square will be root 2 square 3 square is 9 square root 2 square is 2 so 9 minus 2 is 7 now we have sum of roots as 6 product of root as 7 we will substitute into the expression of quadratic equation then the equation becomes x square minus alpha plus beta is 6 into x plus alpha into beta is 7 and this is equal to 0 and this is the quadratic equation looking into the options x square minus 6x plus 7 is equal to 0 is present in option 1 so therefore the right answer here is option 1 i'll stop this video here remaining questions will be solved in my upcoming videos thank you for watching like and share the video if the contents provided are useful to you subscribe to my channel for more updates